Hi, and uh, welcome to Three Sure Signs Your Code Needs Refactoring. Hi, I'm Eric, and uh, in this video, we're just going to talk a bit and look at, look at some code, but um, I want to bring up a topic that uh, I quite often see in, you know, in code reviews and, and when discussing with developers on how to actually write proper AL. And the 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 the, the list of three three things here, I'm I'm guilty of all of them also. And uh, you can probably find multiple examples just in, in the videos. And if you haven't seen them, go subscribe and then you can locate all my errors and comment below them and tell me what I did wrong. Anyway, so this whole video will basically evolve around the theme of stop reusing, uh, especially variables. Um, and um, to get this going, I um, I prepared a very, very elaborate um, PowerPoint. Here it is, the first slide. <laughs> um, and the first thing I want to discuss is the clear command, especially when you want to clear a record. The same rule also goes for clearing JSON objects, for clearing XML objects, uh, or objects I should say variables, um, because quite often what happens, and let me switch over to Visual Studio Code. So here we are, and just to switch it up a bit, I have found some examples from the um, from the base app that kind of looks, uh, sort of illustrates my point. In this case, we are in the uh, job calculate batches code unit, and we're inside a function called post diff buffer. And uh, the interesting thing here is this piece of code. So we have if job diff buffer find uh, first, not find set, find first, but I think that's okay because I think this one is actually temporary. Um, that, we don't care about find. That's a, there's another video on finds, so um, go look that up. Anyway, so in here, in the inner part of, um, of this function, we have a piece of code that starts with a clear and then it fills out a job journal line and insert the job journal line and increases line numbers and so on. Very, very typical. Um, but why, why is there a clear? Well, in this case, there is probably a clear because there is a conditional, um, let's see, move up so you can see. There's a conditional validate that you will only validate the the work type if it's a resource, which makes perfect sense. But if you then have multiple lines and then you have something with a resource and then the line after that without a resource, uh, there could be a, a value hanging over because we are reusing the variable. Um, let me just, so now you've seen it, so let me just zoom out so we can kind of get the, the visual thing here. Um, so so right now the clear might not it is actually wrong, but it's also the indicator of this thing that this thing could be better. And and what I, I'm what I'm saying in code reviews is that stuff like this, this this is a clear um sub routine, right? It, it creates a job journal line and it takes some parameters. It takes a, uh, a job diff buffer and, and, and some things. So in my mind, this should be a procedure. So job journal line becomes a local variable in the new procedure. Um, meaning that we will now have a create job journal line with bunch of parameters. That just that's not a, an issue, uh, but it's isolated 
and the variable only is only used for one record. So there's a local variable, we should probably in it just to be proper here, and, and then do all this stuff, insert, return to the loop, the repeat loop, get the next one, call the inner function again. Then we're clear of the clear. So the clear itself is not the issue necessarily, but the clear is an indicator that stuff like this is probably going to happen. Um, so if you want to improve code like this, make sure that these things goes into a, uh, a sub routine by itself, a procedure by itself. Um, another variant of this, so we can see if we go up here, uh, in this case, job journal line is a local variable, but you'll find a lot, especially the older the code is, um, the, the higher is the probability that a variable like this is a global variable. And, and then, you know, the global variable is used all over the place. So you have to clear it before you do stuff like, uh, like that. So if that's the case, the solution is still stop using the globals. Uh, but way back, way, way back in the history of, uh, of Business Central, we only had global variables. So a lot of code is still sort of structured in the way that it were when we only had uh, global variables. Um, so anyway, that's clear. So uh, think about when you're using clear, if you're actually trying to pass something that should be fixed in another way. So let's move on. The next one is reset. And, you know, the story, let's see, I think I had another one here. Um, again, reset removes all the filters on a variable. But why would you ever want to remove a filter on a variable? Meaning that yeah, there are some specific cases when you're grabbing something, and we'll actually get to that. But uh, most cases, it's because it's, it has probably been used somewhere else before. And and now we're in the post prepaid contract entries report. And I'm pretty sure that... Um, oh, no, I'm not going to search all that. I'm I'm pretty sure that this guy is a global variable. Uh, so now we have a. Let's see if we can find the spot where I were. So now we have a specific post journal line function, and and this is where we use the variable, but we also use the variable. See if we can find it. We actually don't use it anywhere else in this case. So, so this is this is really really bad, and and so of course this should just be a local variable. But to be sure, then the the reset is sitting there and and saying okay, we are apparently using this variable for for multiple purposes, um, and we shouldn't. Um, so again, uh, exact same story as with clear. Th th this whole video is the exact same story that we have some indicators of of us reusing stuff. And and I know that in you know just an early version of Nav, just, you know, creating an extra uh, variable was you had to go into the variable dialog and, and find find that what type and add it and it was it was a long and complicated procedure just to add a variable it's not anymore an AL um, so stuff like this again the reset is not necessarily wrong it in the current design it might have to be there but the reset is a clear indicator that the design is probably not right and the code should be refactored um, and the carry on. So, so now, now you're, you're catching on to, uh, to what I'm talking about. So the last one is set range. 
with, without a filter, without a range, uh, which means that we're removing the filter from a specific field. And this is, again, the exact same story. Let's see where we... Oh, here's a good one. Yeah, yeah, you, you're going to love this one. Just trying to figure out what goes on here is a, uh, is a major undertaking. So in this case, we have a variable called service order line. Um, and uh, let's see what kind of variable that is. So we're in a on after get record and the service order line is is again a global variable. Um, so, you know, this, the, the, the subtitle to this week video could also be stop using globals. Um, but that might be another video. Let me know in the comments below if you want a dedicated video on globals. I, I could rant about those all day. Um, so in this case, we have a, a service order line record. We start by resetting it. And we have to reset because it's a global. Uh, so if it were, if it were just a, let's see where it's used. It's only used. It's only used in this piece of code. We can see the uh, the minimap. It, the the global variable is there, and this, the last line is that it's part of a on before delete. Um, so no reason, but since. So, so the reset is just right now an indicator that, hey, this is a global, so we have to reset because we did a bunch, we do a bunch of, of filter gymnastics on this one. So we have to reset before we can go again. But in this case, we set a range on document type and document number and quantity invoice different from zero. Um, if we find any of those, if we find any of those, then we remove the filter of quantity invoiced and set another filter on outstanding quantities. So if there's something has been invoiced, then we check that if there's nothing outstanding, because now it's an, a not find, then we remove the filter on the outstanding quantity. So if so follow the logic here. If if the quantity invoiced, if there are quantity invoiced on a certain order, and there's nothing outstanding, then we check if there is nothing that shipped and not invoiced. Then we lock the table. Uh, and 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 now it's it's if not service order line find. And then we lock the table, the table, and then we ask the same thing again. So, so th there's more than one issue in this code, uh, but we we can only handle one thing at a time. So now we're resetting. Oops, go away, tooltip. Now we're resetting the quantity. So now we're back to let's find all the lines that we need to delete, um, and. The question is if this code couldn't have been written clearer um, with perhaps multiple variables instead of instead of removing filters, then you know only adding filters uh, and doing a new query, set filters on a new record, do a new query in, instead of this filter on, filter off, uh, wax on, wax off kind of process um maybe if uh, if there's somebody on this on the server team at microsoft who is watching this explain whether give me give me a comment on is is this better for for performance or is it better to split it out in multiple variables uh, from a readability perspective it would be way easier that this was you know one statement service order lines invoiced we find that then we create a new statement. Uh, service order lines outstanding this one then we create a new statement new variable service order lines quantity ship not invoiced um, because then i can read what the code is doing trying to decipher the 
the uh, filter on, filter off here is very, very difficult uh, and takes a lot of practice. Uh, and it's it's so easy to break this code. That's the next thing, because oh, then the customer asks, uh, we need something other, and then we change one of these things. We add a filter, and then we forget to reset it again further down in the code, and everything explodes. Um, so that's the third indicator in in, in my book that. Uh, you need to refactor your code. And basically what I'm trying to say, wait, hang on this one. I was actually, it says field behind that. I should have done that. Let me do some real time PowerPoint. There we go. Now we can see all of them. <laughs> it says field up there. Um, so in my book, all these are clear indicators that you're reusing stuff that you should not reuse. Um, so whenever I encounter stuff like this in code, I, okay, something is reusing and, and you probably need to refactor. So that's the tip of the day. Uh, use these use these things to, uh, to figure out if uh, your code could be cleaner. Uh, there's very, very few cases where it actually makes sense to reuse a variable. Uh, and as soon as you're in loops, then you should put everything in, in separate, uh, separate, uh, separate procedures. So with that tippet of, uh, of the week, uh, this is it for me. So have a wonderful day. Cheers.